The scope function is one of my favorite tools in the free SureServo 2 Pro software suite, and it's super easy to use. Let's put the encoder's pulses on channel 1, the yellow channel, and the position and pulse user units on channel 2. And let's change that to red to give us some contrast. Now remember that while the servo motor's encoder has over 16 million pulses per revolution, the drive defaults to 100,000 user pulses input, which we call PUU, to get one revolution via the electronic gearing. There's a whole video showing you how to use electronic gearing, so we won't get into that here. Each of the eight channels has resources allocated to display 16-bit numbers. The scope recognized that we're asking it to display a 32-bit number, so it automatically closed out channel 3 and gave those resources to channel 1 so it could display this 32-bit number. And it also closed out channel 4 and gave its resources to channel 2, another 32-bit number. These check marks tell us that we're using 32-bit channels. If I manually turn that off, then channel 3 becomes available. But that will mess things up, so I'll turn that back on. Channels 3 and 4 can only be used for 16-bit numbers or to augment channels 1 and 2. These channels work the same way. You get four 16-bit channels or you can combine 5 and 7 or 6 and 8 to get two 32-bit channels. Let's collect 20 seconds of data, disable the unused channels, and hit Run and rotate the motor shaft roughly one full rotation, then another full rotation, then back one rotation, and another and then hit stop. This button automatically optimizes the display. We see the actual encoder on the motor climb to 16 million and then wrap back to zero as we rotate past one full revolution. Exactly what we expect to see. If I click to put a cursor at the start of one of those cycles and then move my mouse to the start of the next cycle, we see the position changed the 100,000 pulses that electronic gear ratio is set to and it keeps counting up while the encoder wrapped back to zero. Looks like it started here and went up to here, which is the two revolutions we did. Perfect. So this column is the scale for the yellow trace, while this one is the scale for the red trace. We can click on this guy to make all the scales the same. Now the couple hundred thousand of the position data is dwarfed by the 16 million size of the encoder data. Click on this guy to get back to independent scales, or click on this guy to optimize the display. The independent axes are a huge help when you're trying to compare traces with little numbers with traces that have big numbers. You can zoom in and zoom out using these guys, or you can draw around the area you want to zoom into. And this keeps track of changes you make so you can quickly get back to a previous screen. Let's do another example. I set up the drive in position register mode to automatically rotate this four pound pulley clockwise four revolutions, pause for half a second, rotate counterclockwise for four revolutions, wait half a second, and then repeat that indefinitely. The first path is set up to accelerate and decelerate over 15 milliseconds. The second path is set to ramp over 250 milliseconds. Check out the position register mode video to learn how to set all that up. Now I haven't tuned this drive yet, but when I enable the servo and trigger the path to the naked eye, everything seems to be working fine, right? Let's find out. Let's have the scope track the commanded position, which is what we told it to do, and also monitor the actual position, which is the same trace that we had in the last demo. I also have the commanded speed and the actual speed being tracked, but not shown yet. Let's run the scope and I'll enable the servo for a few cycles. Okay, that's enough for now. Stop the servo and stop the scope. I'll hit this button to optimize the display and this one to get them on the same scale. We're looking at position and sure enough, the commanded position changed from zero to 400,000 but the actual position overshot what we asked for. Do you want the bit on your CNC missing the mark by this much? Probably not. Now most people will simply slow the system down for better accuracy. We can see that on the second path where we had slow ramps. Yep, no overshoot there. Does that mean we have to give up speed to get accuracy? No, it doesn't. But before I show you how to fix that, let's look at the speed command 
and the actual speed. I'm going to optimize the display to expand everything to full screen to make it easier to see. We see the speed accelerated up to speed in about 80 to 90 milliseconds. We asked for 15, and it overshot the 1500 RPM we asked for in an effort to make up for lost time and try to hit the position in time. We also see the purple actual speed didn't track the blue commanded speed very well at all, did it? And we can see on the path with slow ramps that it didn't quite finish the 250 millisecond acceleration ramp we asked for before it had to start decelerating. So that tells us our ramps are too long. We're never getting up to speed, which means we're wasting time. We'll want to speed up those ramp times a bit, but we won't know how much we can speed them up until we get rid of the overshoot issue. So let's see if we can fix the position overshoot issue by doing an auto-tune. There's a whole video showing you how to do that, so I'll just fast forward through that for this video. Okay, I ran auto-tune. It took a whole 80 seconds to complete. Let's update the parameters and see if things look better now. Run a scope, execute a few cycles of remotion, stop the scope, and zoom in. And look at that. The red actual position gives us a nice smooth landing with no overshoot. Perfect. And if I bring back up the speed command and the actual speed, we see they're tracking each other perfectly now. Yeah, auto-tune on a Sure Servo 2 drive is one of the best I've ever seen. It does an amazing job. So, how cool is that? Using the scope function, you can actually see what's going on and make intelligent decisions about how to fix things without having to resort to the trial and error guessing game. The insight the scope gives you into how your system is working is incredible. For example, could you now go into the PR mode configuration and start tweaking loop gains and watching in real time how that impacts your system? Sure. Again, no guessing, you immediately see the impact each change has on your system in real time. And there are so many other things you can monitor. You're really only limited by your imagination. It's crazy how much visibility this gives you into exactly what your system's doing. There are a few things to be aware of. First, you can monitor the digital I.O. Just know that it's a combination of all the bits. So if digital input zero changes, then the trace will only change by one. But if digital input 8 changes, it'll change by 256. If they both change, the trace will change by 257. Can you also monitor the individual bits? Sure. Just double click on the data box and you see a breakout of all the individual bits for any parameter, not just the digital I.O. It automatically shows you all 32 bits if that's what you're looking at. And if you double click again, you see the hex version of the data. Double click a third time to clear the display. You can save the scope data to disk as just the scope data or the scope data and parameters. That way, when you load the scope data using this guy, you know the drive is in the exact same state as when you captured the scope trace. Now, those are binary files, so you can't import them into a spreadsheet. But look at this. If you right click on the scope, you get a menu where you can take a screenshot and save the scope as a text file that can be imported into Excel. It looks like this, where you see the software version, what each channel was recording, and the data for each channel. When I import it into Excel, it looks like this. Now one caution, this dumps the entire buffer. This one was 160,000 lines long, so be patient. It takes a while for the PC to transfer or really do anything with that much data. These guys simply enable or disable all these channels. You can select how you choose each item to view here. You can select via the normal English terms we've been using, or you can select what you want to display by parameter address or by parameter group and number. This one allows you to use the scope to plot any of the things you see on the drive's LED display. Table 8.3 in the user manual lists all of those LED displays. You just enter the decimal number of the display you want to monitor on the scope. The cursors are simple. Click at one point. Now when you move the cursor, it tells you the difference between the point you clicked on and where you are now for each trace. This says keep the most recent 40 seconds of data, for example. And this says sample the data at 8,000 times per second. You can double the sample rate, but you lose half the channels when you do that. Change the color of each trace by clicking on the color box. 
Change the scope properties by clicking on preferences, where you can disable the grid lines, change the color of the grid, change the auto adjust, etc. If you need more scope area, then unpin this side of the scope so it only pops up when the mouse cursor is over there. If you want it to stay up, then just repin it. Of course, you can zoom in, zoom out, print, and clear the screen. You can also select the background color and the scope screen color. Just know that when you save the data, it only saves the data, not the formatting. So when you open a saved file, it comes up in the current color scheme. Well, that ought to be enough to get you started with the SureServo 2 Pro scope function. It really is amazing that the software contains so many high-end features like this, and it's still completely free. That's crazy. Just go to AutomationDirect.com and search for SureServo 2 Pro to download it right now. Click here to see more SureServo 2 videos. Click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you'll be notified when we publish more videos like this. And click here to learn about AutomationDirect's free award-winning support options.